Hey everyone, I'm Sherry Jensen with Confident Kids Academy and I just wanted to jump on real quick uh, to talk about spelling. So um, at first I was just going to talk about like rules that have worked or ways of teaching spelling that have worked for me. Um, but I think it's, it's best to start on the decoding side first and then kind of go into spelling. So for example, if you are teaching vowel teams, like for example these vowel teams, the, the vowel teams are, are two vowels, most people know that vowel teams are two vowels together, right? But there are actually two different kinds of vowel teams. And it's important that we not teach both of them at the same time because we'll really get kids confused. So these are vowel teams where the two together make the first vowel say his name or, or uh, you know, a lot of people have different ways of saying it, like the, the um, first one or the second vowel makes the first one say his name or the first one does the talking, the second one does the walking. Um, all, there are all kinds of different rules that people, or ways of saying it. But basically, this becomes a long vowel sound. And, um, and that is only with these vowel teams. But you can look at other vowel teams, like for example, O-U and O-W, they make the owl sound, right? Well, owl is not, does not make the first vowel say his name or make it a long vowel sound. So you don't want to teach them at the same time. You want them to be super solid here first and then talk, I tend to talk to my kids about this being more of an exception. Um, so like we have these general rules that these are vowel teams and then we have these guys who kind of have their own set of rules. And so um, I introduce them differently um, and later on once they're solid. But, so one, one way that I like to introduce them is through flashcards first to show them the flashcard, have them say the sound all the way through so that they're comfortable with the sound. I always talk about these two as being buddies. They're the buddies that say the same sound together. The same with once you do go, once they're solid on those vowel teams and you're teaching diphthongs, which are these because they have their own distinct sound, um, oi and oi, these are buddies too. So oi as in boy and oi as in boil. And so we talk about how they're, they go together, their buddies that go together, but we always start our, our lessons with the, with the individual sounds first, together. Um, the same with, and then we have the OW teams, O-W and O-U, and we have the AW teams, A-U and A-W. So introduce them that way first so that they're always matching them and then and um, able to distinguish them first by themselves before you start integra integrating reading and spelling with them. So um, so once we practice what I do is I'll have them um, look at the vowel team and then spell it in the air. O A spells O. And so they spell it in the air, O, A, spells O, and they underline it with their finger in, in the air. They don't have to write it, they're just writing it, imaging it in their brain so their brain is starting to lock it in. Um, you don't want it to be too big of a space because then they'll just go like this and then they're not actually picturing it. You want them to picture it. Now kids, I have noticed that kids with ADHD or there are several kids that that do better spelling with their finger on a, on something instead of in the air. Um, I I actually can picture it better in my mind um, if I'm if I'm doing it on something than if I'm doing it in, in the air. So if your kids are more concrete, you can um, that can be helpful. So anyway, so that's just getting through the sounds and getting comfortable with the sounds. But then when you actually go to work with the words, um, one way that I like to do this, and I also do this with spelling, but I, but I also do it with decoding, teaching the decoding rules. So if, if my words were boat, keep, claim, cloak, trait, meet, spleen, roam, bait, float, we have some rules here. We have... 
the OA rule. That's in one color, so I'm going to put that in green because we're going to color code these to lock them in the brains. We have the AI rule. And we have the EE -E rule. Okay? So, a great way to practice these rules is to put, just put the letters up above, they can't see these. These are words that you you have um, on a list that they're not able to see, right? So then you give them a word and say, after you've already practiced and they already know the OA makes the O sound, AI makes the A sound, EE -E makes the E sound. Then you can say, um, boat. And they have to pick which column the word boat is and then spell it correctly. So when they first go to pick, they have to match the color. So as soon as they pick up their marker, you know whether they understood the concept or not. So as soon as they pick it up, if I, if I said the word boat and I picked up a black marker, I mean, and my, my child picked up a black marker, I automatically know before they've written a thing um, that, they, that they are not, that they, they forgot the vowel team or didn't understand the vowel team. Now, why is that important? It's important because when people write things down, they're encoding it in their brains. So if we can get them to encode it correctly the first time and as many times as possible, um, if they're encoding it correctly, then they're actually remembering it correctly and locking it in their brain the right way. So that's what I really like about the, the uh, doing colors and doing markers is the fact that I can tell before they start writing whether they have the rule, it also provides a lot of structure and support to do it this way, but also the colors are coding in their brains differently. So like they can, if you, especially if you did OA, if every time they had OA, it was always green, and every time they had AI, it was always red, and every time they had EE, it was always black, then they can start to encode that in their brain as that color combination um, uh, Set, or is that color goes with that vowel T. So anyway, so I would give them the word boat and they would go and they should be able to spell it correctly. And this provides them with a ton of structure, right? They're still learning vowel teams. They're still practicing vowel teams, but they are, um, but I can also practice like blends, CL, CL here, I can, um, three, consonant vet blends right here. So I can, I can practice a lot of skills embedded into this, still practice spelling, and still practice, this is still giving them exposure to reading. So after they, after they write each of these, they, so they would choose boat, so then they go pick up their black marker, put it under boat under here. If they spell it incorrectly, then I can, um, say you're really close what do you you know take a look at this because sometimes they'll put like ea instead or e t e or something like that then uh with e on the end then you can say oh wait let's look at the vowel combination let's look at the vowel team up here and draw their eyes back to it so anyway i find that this is a very valuable way to teach um decoding and teaching spelling when there are rules um I also, even when my son had um, regular spelling lists with his school program, the first thing I do is look for what rules are being reinforced here. If there are rules being in, reinforced here, then I automatically put those in different colors in different places, and then I give him the spelling words and we do a pretest and he sees if he can figure out what they are. Um, if there are not rules, if there aren't any rules, then that's when I have him look at the word, picture it in his mind, close his eyes, spell it out loud so he's hearing it, he's speaking it, he's looking at it, so he's locking it into three different areas of his brain, and then, um, and then he's writing it, um, writing it in the air first, and, and then he can practice writing it on paper too. 
but as many places you can lock in in spring, the better off, the better he will remember it.